Hey everybody and welcome back to Jim's Garage. In this video, I'm finally gonna be upgrading my home automation, bringing it into the 21st century. For any of you who've seen my previous videos, do check out the playlist if you haven't. You'll know that my setup's a little bit antiquated. The key things really are that well, it uses a Con V2, which is a single USB device connected to one of my nodes. If ever that goes down, it knocks out my home automation. Plus, it's kind of proprietary using the FOSCON ecosystem. I want to change that now to the SLB6 that uses pretty much the latest and greatest technologies for home automation. Now, this device, I'm only going to be just touching the surface in this video. And I do recommend you go and check it out because there's a whole host of other stuff that it does that I'm not even going to make use of until further down the line. Some of the best things about this product are the connectivity. So you can see here on this picture, it's got Ethernet connectivity that's not just Ethernet. This whole thing actually can be powered through PoE as well. So that's part of the reason I want this. If I put this into my switch, I can power it solely through the switch. And then irrespective of any of the devices going down, I can still access this device. If you don't want to use that, you could just use the Wi-Fi to connect to it, or you can even use USB or Bluetooth. Now, you can actually mix those up as well. For example, you could just power it through the Ethernet and then you could connect via Wi-Fi, or you could power it through USB and connect via the LAN. If you don't have a PoE switch, pretty much any combination will work. Now this integrates nicely with Home Assistant, which is what I'm ultimately going to be doing for most of the management of the devices on my network. But we can also install Zigbee to MQTT, which is something I mentioned in that previous series of videos that I'd move on to. The device can also be set up as a coordinator, i.e. this is the brains of it, this is what configures the rest of the network, or it can actually be, say, more of a repeater to extend the range of your existing Zigbee network. What's also awesome about this device is you can actually use it to upgrade the firmware of the devices on your Zigbee network. I'm really interested to check that out and we'll see that later in the video because most of the devices on my IoT network have never been updated. The device itself has an awesome user interface that makes administration an absolute breeze. You can update the device simply through one click and you can also view all of the other settings for your controller. It supports pretty much all of the connections that you want, all of the protocols as well, the latest and greatest. And even for you tinkerers out there, you can actually get some pinouts on this to add additional functionality. So by the end of this video, what I'm hoping to demonstrate is I'll set up this device, I'll get it up and running on my network. We'll be able to dial in and configure this as a controller. We'll then set up Zigbee to MQTT, which will act as a piece of middleware between this hardware and then Home Assistant. And we'll also have an existing MQTT server set up, which I've covered in a previous video, but I'll give a whistle stop overview as well. That's used as a real time messaging protocol to actually pass events within a log that can then be actioned upon. That will become clearer later on. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hop now over onto my VS Code to my Docker host. We're going to set up a couple of containers, then we're going to plug in the device, and then we should have all of the components up and running. I'm assuming in this video that you've already got Home Assistant set up, but if you haven't, go and check out my previous video or whichever way you want to get that integrated, make sure that's up and running. Now for setup in this video, we're simply going to be doing the Zigbee to MQTT container, but I've also put in here a commented out Mosquito container. Now I'm not going to go into that in this video because I've already got a video on it and I've already got this container up and running. It's actually running in Kubernetes, but irrespective of where it's running, just make sure that that service is available to you. That's because we're going to connect the Zigbee to MQTT server to it, the clues in the title, and that will give us a connection between the physical dongle, the device, the MQTT server, this container here, and ultimately we should be able to manage this through Home Assistant. So very quickly, Zigbee to MQTT aims to replace the bridges that are on your current devices, i.e. things like the Philip Hue, the proprietary bridges. The idea is to get rid of all of them with this one single open source platform. And that has a number of benefits. One, you've got complete control over it. Two, you don't have to have multiple dongles. And C, you can probably expand the functionality through open source projects, additional expansions, and even your own tinkering. So let's have a quick look now through the container itself. It's actually really simple to get up and running. And then hopefully we can start having a bit of fun connecting these devices together. And at the moment, everything is unplugged in my network. I've actually disconnected my current home assistant setup with my existing network. So all these lights, they're not working. Hopefully by the end of this video, we'll be able to demonstrate that we've got everything up and running. Now this setup is slightly different from what you'll see on the official documentation, or should I say it's configured slightly differently from the default. 
Now we're just pulling down the latest container image here. We're also setting a repository for where the app data is going to sit and we're exposing a port. Now I'm going to leave out the traffic labels just for this video, albeit personally I will be adding them back in. I'm simply doing this because probably from the start we're going to be accessing this through the IP in the port anyway and I can then do the administrative portal at a later date. Other than that, you might want to add the devices here. If you're not going to be using the device that I'm using here, you can still use Zigbee to MQTT with other devices. So for example, if it's a USB device, you can then find the device serial and add that in as a device into your container stack. Because we're going to be doing this over the IP, because this supports an IP, we're not going to need to pass through a device. We're going to connect to a device just over the network. So if we now jump into this container folder and we spin up this container, that's running. So I'm going to hop into Portainer just to make sure that everything's looking as it should. So over on Portainer, you can see here that we've got that Zigbee to MQTT now up and running. And the and the previous one I used to use was actually this Decons. They're the people that manufactured the Combi 2, which is that USB stick I was using. So that's turned off and Zigbee to MQTT is turned on. So hopefully now we've got everything we need up and running. We've got Zigbee to MQTT, we've got Home Assistant and we've got Mosquito. So we should be able to access this now and then we'll plug in the Zigbee and then we should get onto some more configuration. Now if we navigate to the Zigbee to MQTT container page, that's the IP address of my Docker host and remember that was on port 8080, we do get to the dashboard which is great. Now because I don't have a USB for this anymore, if I click on here you'll see the devices attached to my virtual machine. We don't actually need that but if you were using say a USB adapter you would want to get it from here. Now, most of this stuff we can actually just leave as default. So it should generate network keys, the PAN IDs and the extended PAN IDs. But if you do want to learn more about that, click on the link here. And this whole configuration file, you can actually pre-populate and load as a config file into your Docker. So once you've got this up and running, a working config, in the future, it might be a good idea to make a copy of that locally and then just mount that into the container so you don't have to do this each time. Really, the things that we are interested in are down here at the MQTT space. Now, it's going to create a new topic. So basically, whenever anything gets sent, it has a topic assigned to it. So you can have multiple topics and then you subscribe to different topics. So, for example, you might have another network with another topic, those sorts of things. Now, I'm just going to leave that as the Zigbee to MQTT. Makes sense. That's what this container is called. Now, the MQTT server for me is not at that address. That's because I'm running that in Kubernetes somewhere else. So I do need to change this value here to reflect that. Now, I'm not actually running it authenticated either, which is probably naughty, but I have got this on its own segmented VLAN that only it can talk to, my own IoT VLAN. Do bear that in mind, albeit I probably should upgrade that kit, make sure it's all nice and authenticated. So the IP address that I'm actually running it at is 200.14. And then it asks us whether we want the front end enabled. So I'm going to say yes, and I'm also going to say Home Assistant enabled. Now what that will allow us to do is actually integrate better with different applications. In this case, predominantly going to be Home Assistant. So that I'll be able to actually control my network with the convenience and the niceness that is Home Assistant. But I can always come back to this dashboard if I want to. And if you think about it hierarchically, Home Assistant is actually going to piggyback off the back of this service. So there is sometimes a lot of value in actually changing the Zigbee to MQTT network first and then reflecting the changes downstream as opposed to kind of pushing them up. So now I've connected up the device and it's been given an IP address. I now need to put that at the top where it says devices. So now hopefully if we scroll down, we should be able to submit these values. It says that it's now starting and hopefully it will connect over to that device and be able to pick it up. Now that that's completed, it's taken us to this page here, whereby we're out of the configuration file and we can actually start seeing what our network will be. But there's nothing actually on here yet. So at this juncture, what we've done is we've set up Zigbee to MQTT and it can now connect to this over here, which is our co coordinator. Now, one interesting thing here is 
I did have to change this on mine. It was set up the default to the Z stack, but actually it required the Ember controller. And I believe that's to do with the chipset that's inside the device itself. So if you actually go to the web page, you can find out which is the right adapter for you, but this is gonna tell you what you need to set it to in that previous config page. Now that I've got everything working from a software perspective, I need to unpair my existing kit because that's on the old network and I'm creating a new network. Now, I'm gonna to have to fiddle around off camera for a bit to get this working, but there seems to be a number of ways that I can get my old hue bulbs to work. So I'm gonna go through these methods that are on the MQTT website, and hopefully I'll see you in a moment, whereby we're gonna hop back straight into the Zigbee to MQTT, and we're gonna say permit join. Then hopefully all of those devices will connect to this network, and we can start to build out that new map that we'll actually be able to see on here of all the devices and how they're actually connected to the controller. So the method that worked for me was the one whereby I used the dimmer switch that came with it, hold the two buttons either end for 10 seconds and it made the lights flash, then turn them on and off of the wall. Fingers crossed we are now in pairing mode, so let's head over to the Zigbee to MQTT dashboard and we'll turn on pairing. To do that we're going to click permit join all and it should pick up my lights with any luck. Here we go, here's one light that it's picked up and I can tell already this is gonna be a fun process. So I'm gonna go away again and quickly try and repair some of these other ones and I'll be back in a minute once that's completed. So after a bit of playing around, I've now got the four dimmable bulbs that are in my garage. We can see them all here. If we click on the map, you can see that these devices are actually connected to here. I need to refresh this to pick up the remaining bulbs. We should get all four now connected to the coordinator, which is pretty cool. This is actively going out now and trying to map it. So here you can see basically in this room I'm in, all of them are directly connected to this device, to the coordinator. Now, one thing that we can actually do is we can click on these bulbs as well. We can go to the devices tab. We can actually set new names for them so we can edit put a new name here and importantly we can update the home assistant entity id now we haven't done that yet because we're going to go and configure home assistant but that is something that's good to have now one thing that's probably a good idea for me because i haven't actually updated these since i bought them is to go to the over the air update just over here and check for a new update i'm going to check all but i'm not going to update all because it does recommend that before you update because the bandwidth is ex extremely limited through zigbee we should do it manually each at a time. So I'm gonna update the firmware on this. I think you can actually schedule it. Yeah, you can. So we can see here that firmware version 1.0 and now we're on 2.8, so possibly I'm years out of date. Let's just update one and see what happens. You can see now that we've got a little progress bar. So I'm gonna work through all of my devices. I'm also gonna try and add all of the other devices that I've got in my house. So things like this motion sensor, for example, a couple of switches, etc., some uh, door sensors. I'm gonna try and get those all added onto here and then all updated and I'll see you at the end of that. And so finally, after what feels like forever, I've added quite a few of the core devices that I use. You can see this one's still updating. I've been updating for a long time. We get a handy dashboard, but obviously this is not really a patch on Home Assistant and what we'll set up in there. We've got a map, which is pretty handy. This will show you basically how all of the devices are connected. And you'll see a handy legend in the bottom, which will tell you more about what that actually means. But broadly speaking, the solid lines in blue, those are direct connections from the router to the coordinator. And all of the green are sort of edge devices. Now you can see some of those have a solid line, i.e. they're connected straight back to that Zigbee coordinator. Others, they have a dashed line. So that dashed green means that they're going through basically a router and then they're going to coordinator. So this one here, this switch goes into the bear lamp and then it goes into the coordinator. Whereas this one over here, the garage switch, that directly goes straight into the router. So that's pretty cool. And obviously this can help you if you're facing say bottlenecks or you've got some congestion, you can move things around. Obviously some things probably just need to be where they are, but you could maybe add another light as a router and hopefully sort of split that traffic up. You can also see the quality of the connections between devices denoted by these numbers. So now I'm pretty happy with what I've got. I think the next phase is obviously to now go into Home Assistant and let's sync this up. If we actually look quickly in the dashboard, you'll see here now on the actual stick itself, 
you can see now we've got this set up so it knows that it's connected we've also if we have a look in the logs you can see here it's pumping out all of this data so for example power on the quality of the light the light sensors the temperatures all of that sort of stuff so we should have pretty much everything we need now to build this out into home assistant so without further ado let's head into home assistant now heading over to home assistant going to the settings you can see that it's starting to pick stuff up already now that's probably because in my integrations I've actually already got MQTT installed and to do that really in the bottom right hand corner we just click add integration and then we click MQTT and we add the server details and once we've got the MQTT established we should be able to click on here the 15 devices and we should start seeing things so for example yeah we can see the garage switch the landing the sitting room the conservatory all of those sorts of things and the rest of them I'm going to have to work out what these actually are and then update them so for example these here these four I probably want to get onto those sooner rather than later because I like to have the individual lights in here that are dimmable but I don't know if this will actually show but if I turn this on and off yeah hopefully this side of my face can you see in the background I'm turning that on and off and that's changing so I know actually that this is the back left light so what I can actually do here is I can change the name of it I can update all of that sort of stuff you can see here it's the one that ends in 15f so if we go back into here this 15f I'm hopeful that if I click on that and then I click the edit for the name so back left I should be able to update that in the home assistant so let me just rename that and then if I go back to another one now that that should be updated and reflected in here we can see it down here now that back left let's try to do that to another one so if I go to a different light let's go on to this dashboard let me just try this one so that one's the front right let me change that one to front right now hopefully if I update the ID in Home Assistant, I can click Rename and then that will show up in here, front right, there we go. So now after a bit of tinkering, basically following what I've showcased in my earlier Home Assistant video, you can see here that now these new sensors are all starting to be populated. If we go back to this MQTT here, look at the devices, you'll see all of these names are now starting to be reflected within Home Assistant. So here, for example, I'm tracking the battery levels of the devices. If I go to the temperature, you can see that I've got some temperatures and some graphs over time. And also I've got some light control. There's more things I need to fix on here, updating the entity names, etc. And I've also updated some of my automations. So for example, here's my little wireless switch. If I click this, it should go dark. And then if I click it again, it should come back on. And I've got a myriad of other automations that I've set up around the house, just so things are like basically automatic lighting when it's dark, etc. But hopefully now this should give you the tools that you need to implement that new SLB device into your Home Assistant stack and reap the benefits of having all of your devices on a single controller with all of the bells and whistles that come with that device, Wi-Fi, USB, PoE, and all of the standards protocols it supports. I think it's really awesome and I should have updated sooner. So thanks for watching everybody. I hope you found that useful. Hopefully this gives you the information to replicate what I've just set up. I'll drop a link to the item below that will be an affiliate link. I do recommend you go and buy this to support the manufacturer through their website, especially as they're a Ukrainian outfit as well and could probably do with all the help they can get at the moment. Anyway, if you've liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, everybody.